So if you live in America, there's a good chance that some point in your life, you've eaten produce from the produce aisle of your local supermarket that is genetically modified. So for those of you who don't know, genetically modified organisms are animals or plants or whatever that's been genetically changed by scientists to change how it lives or grows or, or develops. And so in the case of produce at the supermarket, some of the produce that you buy is actually been genetically modified to be different than the kind of corn you would get if you just went out and bought some corn seeds. Now, the debate comes in because in America, you can legally sell food that has been genetically modified without saying that it's been genetically modified. So if you go to the store and you go to buy these things, you have no idea if what you're getting has or hasn't been modified. And a lot of people have a problem with that because there are interest groups out there that say that GMOs have these long-term devastating health consequences and then there are pro-GMO groups who are saying no hey we've done the research and it's totally fine. So you have to be skeptical of a lot of the science that's out there that says we've done these tests and here's what we found. But the reason that it's legal in America and the reason that you can go out and you can buy it and you can find it on the shelves is because the idea is scientifically sound. Basically if you want to genetically modify a crop there are a few steps you go through that gets you from point A to point B. And so the first thing you have to do is you have to try to figure out what do you want to add to whatever crop you already have, right? So let's say I'm a farmer and I just grow corn. That's all I grow is just lots of corn. But I've been having a real problem with weeds lately. And so I want to be able to spray everything in my field with Roundup, but Roundup kills corn. So what you do is you go out and you find an organism, a living thing that Roundup doesn't work on. Usually it's a bacteria or some sort of fungus or whatever, but you find one. And through a pretty lengthy process that we'll go over in a future video, you figure out what part of the DNA makes it so that Roundup doesn't work on it. So in summary, step one is finding a stretch of DNA somewhere in the wild that some organism has that makes it so that they are resistant to Roundup or weed killer or, or whatever it is. The idea is that you're looking for a certain behavior that's somewhere out in the world that you want to add to your plant. So step two is to take that bit of DNA that you really want in your organism, your plant, and to isolate it and then amplify it so that you have a lot of it. You want just millions of little bits of this of this DNA that you're looking for. It's called the target DNA, but basically this is the stretch of DNA that codes for the behavior I'm looking for. So again, uh, you know, Roundup resistance or weed killer resistance. So after you amplify a bunch of little stretches of this DNA so that you can just go ahead and transfer it over to the new organism, you have to do a little bit of modifying. You have to make it so that the new organism sees some things that it recognizes from its own species before it can read this new DNA. But after that, that's all you have to do to make this stuff ready to just be transmitted over to a new species. So the third step is to just take this DNA and put it into the cell because the moment DNA is in a cell, it'll actually start to read that DNA and copy it and do the instructions that the DNA tells it to do. It's, it's that easy. So we have some really weird ways of doing it, but it can be as simplistic as a gene gun. We actually have a device that takes little bits of metal that have DNA, the little DNA particles coated on the outside of it, and it just shoots it at your plant cells. It just keeps bombarding it. And you let it run long enough on enough plant cells, and most of them will explode because they're being hit by little bits of metal. But the ones that don't explode usually have these DNA little fragments implanted inside of them. And that's all it takes. The fourth step is selecting for the cells that you successfully modified, the ones that you changed, right? The ones that you got this DNA into. And so in the case of weed killer resistance, it's really easy. All you do is you take a bunch of cells that you shot with a gene gun and you give them all weed killer. And the ones that live are the ones that you successfully modified. So after finding an organism out there that has this behavior that you're looking for, and then actually taking that bit of DNA that makes it have that behavior and throwing it in your plants and then just growing them up and having them breed and, and have their own seeds, you kind of just are ready to sell your first genetically modified organism. 
So there are other examples of this too. There's not just the Roundup ones. There are, there are plants out there that are naturally insecticidal now because we went and we found organisms that were just repellent to bugs and we took that pizza DNA and we put those inside crops and corn and so you can also buy insecticidal crops now and again these things shouldn't have any effect on humans because the original product isn't harmful to us we make sure of it and we make sure that at the end of the day there's no significant difference between this and normal corn because all we did was just add that one bit of DNA that did that one thing so in conclusion there is some stuff out there that says you're actually perfectly fine if you eat this stuff and there are a lot of people who are still very afraid of eating this stuff. But you'll probably be okay. And if it's any consolation, you have no way of knowing whether or not you're eating it. So it's probably just something you should know.